Hello, my name is Jesse Burgerstock and this is my 10 part guide on creating and building a PC. The first step to my guide is a pretty easy one. Get a general idea of the type of computer you want to build and how much you're willing to spend. For example, if you're going to be building a computer for video and art editing, make sure you invest more in the processor and RAM than the graphic card. If the computer will be used for graphic intensive gaming, a graphic card would be of much higher priority. After you've decided the type of computer you'd like to build, search the internet for computer pieces. There are certain things to check on before the piece of hardware is selected. Make sure the piece comes from a reputable website such as Newegg.com or TigerDirect.com. Check the ratings the customers give, check the comments, and finally the most important step is to make sure the pieces are compatible. The core pieces to building a computer are those that follow. You will need an ATX motherboard, a central processing unit or CPU, a graphic card, RAM, usually 4 to 8 gigabytes of RAM, a hard drive, make sure it's a SATA hard drive, a power supply, an optical drive or DVD drive, thermal paste, a computer case, and the newest Windows operating system. Versions may vary. You may also want to invest in a more powerful heat sink than what is provided with the CPU and an electrostatic wristband to protect against electrostatic discharge, which may damage your computer. The third step to my guide is to check compatibility before you buy it. I'll provide a general idea on how to check if the pieces of a computer are compatible, but always check on forums or with an expert before purchasing the pieces of a computer. We'll go from the out in. First, check the case with the motherboard. If the motherboard is a full ATX, meaning not micro, the case has to be an ATX tower. Check the socket types on the motherboard for everything else besides the power supply. We'll get to that later. The motherboard spec sheet should provide a CPU socket type such as AM3 for the new AMD processors or LG1155 for the new Intel processors. The CPU spec sheet should also provide a socket it needs. RAM works similarly. The motherboard spec sheet will provide a RAM type it can use under the memory standard section of it. The RAM will usually have what kind it is in the title. At this time, it will usually use DDR3. A DVD drive and a hard drive can both be purchased based purely on what you want as long as they and the motherboard are SATA compatible, which they should be at this time. Like the hard drive and the optical drive, any new graphic card should work with any new motherboard. The graphic card should use PCI expansion slots, which the motherboard should supply. Selecting a power supply is where it gets a bit tricky. You have to select a power supply that will be able to supply enough watts for the hardware to operate properly. To do this, look at the spec sheets for all the pieces and look for how much power they will need. Then add them up, select the power supply that has what you need. A 600 watt power supply can handle an average computer. Again, make sure you check with others on things like forums, uh, if you know someone, just to make sure the computer will be compatible and work properly. The last thing you want to do is send a whole computer back because uh, some of the pieces weren't compatible. After you've ordered and received your pieces, before you begin building your computer, you're going to want to take preventative measures to make sure you don't break anything. Make sure you ground yourself. You can either do this by wearing a electrostatic discharge wristband, which is highly recommended, or by touching a piece of metal throughout the computer building process. This will make sure electricity doesn't come off you and destroy any piece of equipment. Uh, you also want to keep the computer in a average humidity room with very little to no static Something like a large desk on a hardwood floor would be perfect. After all the pieces are accounted for and you found a place to put them, make sure you organize all the hardware with the screws and the manuals they come with. Put any software or disks off to the side for later. This will be the first step of putting the computer together. Begin by going over the manual of all the pieces, especially the cases. Do this to understand how to install them properly without risking any damage. You'll first screw in the core of the machine that holds everything together, the motherboard. To do this, you'll have to use what we call risers to keep the motherboard above the case so that it doesn't ground itself out. Risers are usually ghost screws with a hole on the top of them, allowing for another screw to go into them. What you want to do is line up the motherboard's I.O. panel, which contains its USB ports, audio ports, and any other ports the motherboard may have came with, with the hole that would fit on the back of the case. And notice that the holes on the motherboard under them you will screw in the risers. After the risers are in, begin putting screws into each of the risers with the motherboard in between to secure the motherboard to the case. After the motherboard is installed onto the case, 
but the hard drive, optical drive, and power supply on the case as well. The case should supply screws and information on how to screw in each piece, but in general, the optical drive should go into the highest bracket on the front of the case, while the hard drive goes into the lowest bracket on the front of the case. The power supply will be installed into the back of the case, where a large square hole with four screws around it will be. Now we will be installing pieces into the motherboard. Refer to the motherboard's manual for locations of the slots I refer to. Start by installing the CPU and heatsink. To do this, line up the CPU's arrow in the corner with the arrow on the motherboard CPU socket and then lock it in using the lever on the side. Make sure there is no dust or anything in between the CPU and the socket. After the CPU is firmly in place of the socket, apply a pea-sized drop of thermal paste upon the top of the CPU and spread it out. Make sure the whole top of the CPU has a thin layer of it and install the heat sink over it. Make sure to consult the heat sinks manual for instructions to install the heat sink so you don't damage the CPU or motherboard. Then we're going to be installing the RAM. To do this, you must install it into the dim slots by aligning the hole on the RAM with the hole on the dim slots and using the levers on the left and right side of the RAM to lock them in. Lastly, install the graphics card into the PCI expansion slots. Make sure that this panel is lined up with one of the small rectangular holes in the back of the case. After the graphics card is properly fit, either lock in the graphics card panel with pieces provided by the case or screw it in. This all depends on the case. This is the last step to the building portion of the computer, and this step is all wiring. Make sure at all times during this process that the power supply is not plugged into the outlet for severe safety reasons. The power supply should provide all the power cables needed and any adapters that may be needed. Wiring is usually different depending on the motherboard and other hardware, so consult the manual for much needed information on wiring. The basic rule is that if the pin fits into the hole properly, it should probably be there. Pieces that will need power are the following. The motherboard will need a 24 pin, the optical drive and hard drive will need SATA cables which will be in an L shape. The CPU will need a 4 or 8 pin. The socket for it will be found near the CPU. And finally, the graphic card may or may not need power. Consult its manual for it. The optical drive and the hard drive will then have to be connected to the motherboard via SATA cables that should come with the motherboard. Finally, the case. The case will have the wiring on the front for things like power, LED, audio jacks, and USB. They will all have to be plugged into the motherboard. Consult the motherboard's manual on how to do this as the cases and motherboards differ. And we're on our last step. After all the hardware is properly installed and checked over several times, plug the PC in and attempt to turn it on. If it does, install it into a station and finish the PC by installing the operating system and look up drivers for hardware that may need them, especially the graphics card. If the computer will not turn on, or any other problems occur, begin the troubleshooting process by looking up information online about the problem on a separate machine. If all else fails, call the manufacturer of the motherboard and seek help from them. If that fails, try rebuilding the computer. If that fails, begin sending parts back. Well, this is the end of my 10 part guide on building and creating a computer, especially for the first time. For any newcomers out there, it's difficult to build a computer for the first time, so don't fret if something's wrong. It's probably something little. Make sure you consult forums. Make sure you consult manufacturers. Take pictures. Post them online. Ask what's wrong if there's something wrong. If you did it great the first time, if it's working, that's awesome. Besides that, I'm going to go now. Peace.